Welcome to this edition of Diligence Inside America's Boardrooms. I'm TK Kerstetter and I'll be your host today for the show. Uh, we're going to be talking about how board finance committees function and oversee the capital allocation. And joining me is somebody that has spent a good part of their career in that space. Meet Susan Fleming, who is a board member with Virtuous Investment Partners and RLI Corp. Welcome, Susan. Thank you. So before we get started on some of the deeper questions, uh, just tell our audience a little bit about Virtus and RLI, if you would. So Virtus is an um, asset management company. We have a, it's a really boutique, um, including a number of different underlying affiliates, um, both in institutional and in retail um, mutual funds, about 100 billion in assets under management. And RLI Corp is a specialty insurance writer um, that focuses in the U.S. So it gives you a good range of yeah. experiences. Yeah. So, so interestingly, you serve as the chair of the Risk and uh, Finance Committee for Virtus, and you're a member of the Finance and Investment Committee at RLI. So there's no question that we're seeing more uh, finance or finance um, uh, board committees um, and it seems like we're seeing a lot of other committees other than the big three but particularly in this case uh, we want to talk about finance committees and um, why do you think we're seeing a increase in them and is the charge for these committees um, sort of capital based on looking at the cost and the use of capital is that one of the primary functions yeah, so let me answer the first one. Um, all of my board experiences thus far have been in financial services companies, and so primarily insurance. So of the seven boards I've been on over the years, I think all of them had a risk or finance committee um, or some sort of finance committee or maybe an investment committee. So um, I think the trend that we're seeing is moving outside of more financial services where they've always existed. Um, it really, um, that goes to a little bit of how variant the charge is of these various committees. So in financial services, the reason that there are always finance committees um, is because those are firms that have large investment portfolios. And so that would be the main focus and then sort of allocation cost of capital, thinking about that I would say would be secondary. What, with the trend that you're mentioning, now more and more companies are, are seeing that it's useful to have a committee that really focuses in on use of capital and cost of capital. Um, but, you know, they do cover other things. You know, as you can see from the name of one of the committees on is, is risk and finance. So, you know, risk is one of those creatures that it, it sits in different committees. Um, a, a couple of the boards I've been on, risk was paired with finance or with investment, um, you know, overseeing the ERM process, um, that kind of thing, but, but jointly shared with other committees. At Virtus, we own the process, so we think about the allocation of different risk to different committees, and then obviously there's a number of issues that are shared, really board owned. Um, you know, outside of allocation of cost of capital, I guess I would say M&A, that's obviously one use of capital. I, in my experience, these committees tend to own that. And so, um, but th there is quite a bit of variance in, in the charge of the committees. Yeah. yeah. There's no question, one of the things we always say on the show is every company is unique. There is no one size fits all, and it's interesting. But it is interesting to see outside of the, the big three committees, you know, the creativeness that companies are taking on today to say, okay, this is important to our business. We want to have a chair that pays attention to this space and a committee, so we're gonna form a ESG committee or a strategy committee or a fa finance committee or whatever it might be that's relevant to our business, so. Yeah, and I think it makes a ton of sense because over time, you know, is really the role of boards, the quality of boards has increased. I think they're more strategic, they're thinking more deeply, hopefully, about how they can really add value and insight to the business. And so to only have those three standard committees feels too focused on just oversight and governance and check the box. We're, we're making decisions about what are the real differentiators 
in our business and what do we need focus on um, makes more sense to me in terms of adding other committees. And again, that goes back to well, why have I been involved in all these finance and investment committees? Well, because that's so part and parcel of the financial services industry. So um, there's multiple reasons that I'm happy to have you as a guest today, but one of them is I, I don't think we spend enough time on this show with sort of the costs and use of capital, okay? And yet it is so critically important. Um, and so uh, my question for you is, um, with your experience, what sort of are three important questions that you think that boards should be asking with both cost and use of capital to their management team? So the first thing is really pushing on management to explain how they're allocating capital to various business lines. Um, you know, I think often you, you can't look at companies in one big lump. You really need to look at each line of business. What's the risk that's associated with that business? And reward. Um, and therefore, what return do you need? And so as you think about, well, how much capital is required, but what's an adequate rate of return? And then that leads to a second question of, is each line of business carrying its weight in terms of a return on capital? So if you've got one business that eats up a ton of capital, but you know it's very high return, that might be okay versus one that is kind of the steady performer. I think about like catastrophe reinsurance, you know, big capital use, but very and volatile, but very high return potentially versus like auto. It's more reliable, um, and it's great to have that kind of mix, but you really need to be thoughtful about that. Um, so that's one key question. The second thing is how do those lines play, play against each other? So as you're allocating capital, um, are you allocating 100% of the capital that you have or is there excess? And do those lines of business um, reduce the overall risk of the company or are they aggregating? So, you know, you can't, you, you, some are going to add to each other and some are going to take away and you need to look at each line and hold them to the standard of long-term achieving a required rate of return that's reasonable, but also thinking about um, how does the aggregate come together. Um, and then I guess I would say the third is if a line's not performing, um, why? What's going on? Is it because it's not at scale yet and you think that it's going to get to scale? Is it, you know, is it kind of a chronic underperformer? And I think companies um, and boards can sometimes be too complacent in shooting a bad line of business. You know, it's sort of, well, we've always done that. Well, that's not a great answer. You want to really think in a more disciplined way. Um, and then finally, the question we always ask um, on all the committees of this nature that I sit on is, how are you using it, not just internally, because all the answers I've given is much more around organic growth, but okay, we're gonna do a deal, we're looking at an M&A deal, or we're looking at doing a stock repurchase or a dividend. We should always be comparing each of those options to what we can get by investing it back into the business through organic growth. And being really disciplined as you know, deal fever kicks in to make sure that you're, you're using your capital effectively. So, all great points that uh, I appreciate you bringing out. Now, um, I'm gonna take a 180 degree okay. turn here, because <laughs> the other thing that you're well known for is your sort of TEDx talk on uh, gender bias. And uh, bias and, and diversity, uh, obviously huge issues in today's yeah. world, and, and that means it's an issue in the boardroom. and. Um, Sort of what advice would you give directors? Because this is, you know, this starting with the Me Too and everything that's happening, everybody's trying to sort of sort this out under their social right. responsibility. And but what, what advice might you give? Because you've been on the inside. So, what advice might you give to, to boards of directors on how they can um, help and sort of improve this or manage this within their companies? Yeah, so a few different things I would suggest. Um, one is you've got to understand where the company's at. Where is it culturally? Where is it in terms of numbers and that kind of thing? So start by just asking questions. Um, 
you know, if the data is not already be pre being presented to you, and often it's not, you know, where are people of color, where are men and women relative, you know, in terms of numbers at different levels of the organization? How are they being paid? How are they being promoted over time? Um, if you know that, then you want to think about and understand what efforts are we doing to support the advancement of those different groups. Um, you know, so a lot of it is just poking around. Um, one of my, my board colleagues often says that a great director is noses in, fingers out. So, you know, know your role, but asking those questions and indicating from a board level that this is actually a priority to the board will hope, hopefully motivate management, even if it's not a priority to them, to make it one. Um, the second thing, and, and this comes a little bit, I'm biased in that my, my, I have a PhD studying gender bias, so I come from an academic side, although I certainly business person first, um, is, you know, go get good, good information around what works and what doesn't. Um, you know, I think experience is useful, and I certainly draw on my experience from private equity and in the boardroom to talk about these issues. But research can also give you good information. So get educated. Um, and you know, those are two just good starting points. So where can, I, we can't do the, your talk on this justice, but where can people see a copy of, of your speech on the TEDx? Yeah, the easiest place to find is I have a website, um, www.susansfleming, all one word, .com, and a number of different podcasts and um, my TED talk is there. Yeah, well, um, you do a great job with that and hopefully there'll be some people that will get, have benefit on watching that. So Susan, I want to thank you for taking the time to join me today. It's been a pleasure. Thanks, I, I enjoyed being here. Yeah, and that will conclude this edition of Inside America's Boardrooms. We hope you enjoyed the show. We'll be back again next week when we take another look at a critical topic that'll help you be a better board member or committee member. So we'll see you then.